Sweet, sweet memories you gave of me. You can't beat the memories you gave of me. Take one fresh and tender kiss. At one stolen night of bliss One girl, one boy Some grief, some joy Memories are made of this Maybe we could do the wave like Fenway Park <laughs> How does the queen do it like this? Happy holidays from the staff at the Council on Aging here in Ipswich, Mass. We think we've put together a pretty good show for you to watch. There's two segments. The first, we're celebrating the 100th birthday of Gordon's Florist and Greenhouse. And we had uh, a fun time filming Dave Gordon and his niece, Leah. And uh, anyhow, I think you'll enjoy it, okay? And the second segment is just down the road from Gordon's, it's Wolf Hollow. And this was a segment that we had taped, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And Joni Soffron, who uh, runs it, uh, she started with her late husband, Paul. It's a very educational thing. So here's what you do. You go visit Wolf Hollow, coming back into town. You stop at Gordon's, buy a flower or plant for yourself or your loved one, whatever. So anyhow, sit back and enjoy. I've got my Christmas cheer. No, it's just a glass of water. But anyhow, enjoy. Folks, we are here at Gordon's mm -hmm. Greenhouse. Is that the proper Green name? Greenhouse is in Florist, yeah. And this is quite a uh, momentous occasion because this is the hundredth birthday of Gordon's. So yes, it is. For all the <laughs> Ipswichites that have outlasted Hills, the Marguerite, <laughs> Captain Harry's, you name it. All right. And we are here with two of the Gordons. Hello. This is Lear and Hi. David. Fourth generation. Fourth generation. Fifth generation. Fifth generation. So yeah. tell us how it all started. Give us some history. Want me to feel that? Sure. Well, my uh, great grandfather came down from Nova Scotia after moving from Northern Ireland, and I think they settled in. Um, they're Scottish originally, from the Lowland Gordons, and they were. I would say around the time of the hunger famine in Scot in Ireland, potato famines probably when they came over to Nova Scotia really? and they settled there. Wow. And then in 1850s, they came here and they bought, um, I think it was eight acres. We're down to four now. I think it was the land across the street, but I'm not 100% sure of that okay. from Mr. W uh, Mr. Wade, which is an old Ipswich name. Okay. So they built a house, had a dairy farm up until, um, the t well, I'd say around the turn of the century, my great-grandfather started doing estate gardening for a couple of the places over on the other side of the hill. Yeah. And he built these greenhouses initially for starting perennials and annuals to be um, used in his facility and his other landscaping work. And at the time, that was pretty common because you didn't have a lot of different options. And he had a terraced garden on the side by Bruni's where they, he would always cut the flowers off to make the plants more vegetative. And uh, so it'd be bigger, stronger plants, and he'd give it to people going down the street, coming by and probably horse and buggy and <laughs> or early model teas. And then uh, someone said, you really should have to start selling these things. So, so he started with my grandfather and his sister, Harriet Gordon. And um, Harriet was with us until World War II when a brother came back from, uh, he was one of the original CBs in World War II. And they had some, miscommunication, something happened, so Harriet left and Sam came in. And Sam was here until my great uncle, until he passed away with my grandfather around the mid 70s. And uh, Sam ran the greenhouses, my grandfather did the flower shop. My grandfather George was um, colorblind, which is an interesting thing for a florist. <laughs> so <laughs> what they would what do- What color is the rose? Well, you know, uh, you'd do gladioles yeah. and sprays. Yeah. And he'd have nine yellow and one pink, so they just, there was a delivery area upstairs, and this gentleman, Harold Roper, um, came in, and he would switch them around for him, and then okay. you know, find out. So. 
And uh, just another little interesting about Harold Roper, he was someone who in um, the 40s, his, he was sick with kidney problems, heart problems, and all that, and he was at... I have all those. He was at, so, <laughs> he was at Cable Hospital, <laughs> um, and they really, they, they, they signed his death warrant, essentially. They were just, he was going to die, so oh, wow. my uncle took a ladder over, put it up to the window, and sprung him. <laughs> and he put in the work out here, and he worked until 1963 when he passed. Oh, wow. His wife was a nurse at the time. She came to work for us, and she was here over 60 years before she retired. So wow. Was, then we called her Aunt B because she, uh, she was our aunt by... Okay. So, yeah. Then uh, my father took it over, and we, me and my brother joined in, in the 80s and made a big change. We, we moved a house that was in the parking lot. Um, expanded, expanded into this building. Yeah, the original yep. barn that we're in was a chicken coop across the street. Oh wow! So, and that was called Wind Windmill Hill in its day. I guess in the colonial times they had a windmill up. On Where the cable is? Where cable is? Yeah. No kidding. So that's that's what that's wow. it. So, yeah, we uh, went from dairy farming. And the barn burned down. They, the, the other <laughs> brother was too old to take it on. He was in his 80s, so he couldn't take it over. But that's it. That's kind of a reef brief summary where we are. We grew into more plants um, and more retail, cutting flowers when I was young was carnations and palms and stock and snapdragons growing everywhere in all the greenhouses that they were taking to the market and sell in Boston and bring home some of the different things that they needed. It was kind of a barter system. And then it just turned into the FTD was in 1938. Um, just it all just keeps morphing and morphing. So now we're pretty much all retail. Um, we buy in a lot, we grow a lot. It's kind of a, it's kind of the mark, the model now for um, florists. And there's not a lot of us with greenhouse and floral shops around anymore. Yeah, yeah. So. Here's, here's an aside for you. This comes out of nowhere. Uh, I was on a, a trip to Scotland with David Senior, and I have video of him trying to learn how to do the Scottish step dancing. It was kind of a festive <laughs> night. I, I, I want to try to find it. <laughs> yeah, can. that should definitely be included. <laughs> yeah. if it can be. All right, Leah, what do you do here? Okay, well, I'm the fifth generation along with my wow. brother. Um, I've worked here for 12 years. I started when I was 14. Um, oh so, yeah, I brought in some gift stuff, and I kind of run this area and help out in the front um, customers and making things. It's quite Staffing. festive, I'll tell you. I mean, I you know, obviously set up for the holiday season yep. here, but it's pretty neat. Oh, yeah. yeah, decorate all the trees and everything, and that's my favorite part. Okay. Is, yeah. the, is the shopping and the decorating. <laughs> is there a peak, peak part of the year? I mean, Valentine's Day, I'm sure you're selling a lot of flowers. I would say stuff, this is probably our peak time, and yeah. then, like, spring, May, that would be the other peak time. Spring so, business. Yeah, okay. it kind of switches. Day and Easter, but yeah. Basically, goes to the plants but yeah. the more we do in here just you know we have cards are really hugely popular with us that's um, cool. and everyone comes and says these are the best cards around we'll <laughs> that. and it's true I, I get embarrassed after a while <laughs> and Leah that's, uh, that's what Leah came into that was kind of bringing people in the door so she's taken the initiative to kind of make up fine pottery that we got great plants in another kind of thing yeah one stop there. shop for Plants, flowers, gifts. That's I do a little cooking. Be. Maybe we could set up a little. I know. Takeout that's food. all we need is like <laughs> some donuts and some coffee <laughs> or something. Yeah. Then something you like. never want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's cool. I think it's a hundred years. I mean, it's amazing. Oh yeah. I'm going to apologize. Uh, Leah said I should come. The, it was a couple of months ago. You had the hunt on a Sunday. Yep, they September. had the hundredth birthday. Yes, we did. It was great. So they set me up. I'm usually. <laughs> In front of the camera, I'm not usually <laughs> behind the camera, okay? So I park the car and I get it. I say, I better just make oh. sure everything's clicking here. Yeah. <laughs> and the battery was dead. Oh, no. So I was too embarrassed. I just got in the car. Oh, and you should have <laughs> came up and got some ice cream and popcorn, <laughs> though. We had good know. snacks. Was, <laughs> so now we're here. Like, this might be, although we missed the actual birthday party, I think this is kind of a cool time. Yeah, it's our 100th it. Christmas, so 100th it still Christmas. counts. 100th. Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. The snowstorms, the cold oh. Decembers, the hot Decembers, all this that we've been working with all these years. Like this year, the drought was really hard for us. Yeah. 
and we started off the year doing great guns. It was just, we were really having a good year. We did okay through COVID. We adjusted and made it work. And last you stayed year, open, right? We were closed for a week and a half, then when the governor said we okay. could. That's better open. than being closed for a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it was good. COVID was crazy. Yeah. And we yeah. were super busy, which was good. So I made it go by quickly for us, which was wonderful. And uh, you need to come through? Come on, here's a happy customer. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're not. You're going to be on camera. You don't have a phone in? Yeah. <laughs> so, let us Thank you. <laughs> I think that's cool. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So. Got some customer interaction. <laughs> so this has nothing to do with anything except we touched upon COVID. Yes. I was in pre med at Holy Cross years ago, and my chemistry, I forget what they called them overseer or something from freshman chemistry was Dr. Fauci. No hmm. <laughs> That's wild. And he was a pain mm -hmm. in the neck. You, you well. knew he was smart, but oh, your butts and yeah. burn, Malcor is too low. Yeah. Get out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? anyhow. Oh, my God. Come <laughs> over here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we want to show a happy customer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a long business. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Tedford. You're on TV. Oh, we are celebrating yeah. <laughs> the 100th birthday of I know. Gordon. I was here yeah. for the party. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was, but I never showed up because the battery was dead in the camera. And oh. I was embarrassed. So I went no, home. I did. I yeah. did. <laughs> it's a great place to shop. There you go. Well, I can see that you're buying some. <laughs> I am. Are those for Jim? Or? No, they're for my pots. Your pot? My outdoor oh, pots. Oh, pots. <laughs> oh, pot. okay. We don't go that here. No, we don't go that. So, no, okay. Do that. Right. We've been, <laughs> been suggested a hundred times. It's funny, one just Merry like, on that note, a quick little story. In the 60s, this gentleman, yeah, I won't say his name, but he's a popular family in town. Here. Okay. And he was kind of a hippie. And two things. One, he painted the front door pink of the carnation house the last house over. My, my, my uncle took everything in stride, so it wasn't a big deal. But then he started a few starter plants under one of the benches in the, what we call the Belmont House, and uh, it was marijuana. Okay. And, but Sam sent out a kid just to read underneath all the benches. And he, <laughs> read it all. He, didn't have, he didn't even know what it was, but he just went to read it up. So, so that's as close as we come. That was a little happy time we had there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he was a great guy. He, okay. He was, he was a different guy. Well, I would like to thank you for your time. Thank you. And thank you for your success. Oh, yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tuttle. <laughs> okay. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right. <laughs> well, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Well, right. Maybe if we last, we'll do the 150th, <laughs> all right? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, I'll be here for that one. So <laughs> come on down and... I'll be 130. By the... <laughs> I won't tell you how old I'll be. All right. <laughs> come on down and try it, all right? Everything's here except the coffee, but we're working on that. Yeah. All right. Maybe one day. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We're at a place called Wolf Hollow. You've probably uh, been by it many times. You've been down 133 heading towards Essex or away from Essex. Um, I've never been here. And my wife's been here. And she told me i got to get down here. She was absolutely enthralled. And here is Joni Sofren, who is the owner, manager, operator, herd master, whatever. <laughs> so, All of the above. Take it away. We're the, well, how did it start? What are you doing? Well, welcome. Um, the goal and the mission of Wolf Hollow, whose official name is North American Wolf Foundation, um, was established in 1988, opened to the public in 1990. My late husband, Paul, had a fascination for wolves and the Native American culture from the time he was a very small boy. In fact, uh, a lot of this artwork in here is his. His first grade teacher sent a note home to his parents that if he didn't stop drawing wolves and Indians and pay attention, he wasn't going to second grade. <laughs> okay. So he did. He yeah. made it to second grade and beyond. And then he was hit head-on by a drunk driver in 1982. So while he was recovering from that, which was a very long recovery, he started painting wolves again. And then when he saw um, what was going on, particularly in Alaska at the time and in the lower 48, there was um, an attempt to reintroduce the wolf into Yellowstone National Park. Reintroduced, because it had been done for over 70 years. Because the government shot them all off, got rid of them all. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt started that in 1915. Uh, but in this town, in the 1600s, we were killing wolves. For uh, me? Or just as No, just, just because 
fear, the, the perceived animals. notion that they were really bad animals. So he hoped that he could create a place where people could see and learn about wolves, understand their role in nature as the apex predator, keeping everything else in balance, and maybe New England would be a part of the country and make a difference for the wolf in the wild. So how many we got in all here? We have four here, two out back, and two there, so eight in total. Okay. Now the two out back came out of the pack because not all wolves are meant to stay with their family for their lives, so that's why you have the dispersers in the wild. Oh, wow. They're um, very harmonious within their family. They know they need each other to survive. So rather than fight with each other, they simply leave. Go find a mate, start your own pack, now you can be the boss. See, they're basically oh, very shy oh, oh yeah, <laughs> this one. Randall. He wants some good yeah. I see this uh, chalkboard over here. Mm -hmm. Those what? are some states and uh, how many wolves were uh, killed in particular years. Oh, wow. What the population is um, now. As you can see, it's not totally up to date, but there are less than 5,000 wolves in all of the world 48 states, primarily in the West. So is it growing now or is it, I mean? Well, the reintroduction was very, very successful. In fact, I would like to interject here that if you go on YouTube and click on how wolves change rivers, and it shows you how Yellowstone was brought back to full good health within six years after bringing okay. the wolves back in. Right. So that was um, the reason for bringing them back in, but they didn't all stay in Yellowstone. Some wandered off into the western states. And there now you have populations out there where there were none or very few for 70 years. So wow. um, the western states weren't real happy about that, obviously. They're but ranchers. And, uh, are they a predator like small game, like people raising chickens or something? Well, if there's not, absolutely nothing else for them, okay. yeah. But uh, there are so many options. Livestock guarding dogs. Uh, donkeys and llamas have been proven to be 100% successful in protecting livestock from predators. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, you don't have to just go kill something because it's there. There are other ways of, of managing and making room for, for everything. Is this a family? This is Argus. These are all siblings, yes. Okay. Um, Mothered by? No. We have no, no parents and okay. no breeders right now. Okay. Hey, Grandy. It was for you. Oh. Oh, you got to be brave. So you can see the natural shyness of the animal just because yeah. they've never seen you before, so they're not quite comfortable coming too close to the fence. People come and see and they learn what they do, what they don't do. And when folks are here, volunteers are in the enclosure with the wolves, it kind of if anybody has any pre preconceived notions about, you know, how vicious they are, it shows that when you socialize to them and you're bonded to them that you are a member of their family, which is quite rewarding. What do they weigh? I mean, 100? Like um, 80? She weighs about 110. Oh, okay. Females range from about 80 to about 100. She's, she's big for a female. Males range from 90 to 120, maybe. It's been a good worker. The biggest wolf ever documented in the wild was 176 pounds and 7 foot 2 inches tall standing on its hind legs. So it depends on where they live, too. The Mexican wolf, which is a subspecies of the gray wolf, are very small because in the southwest of Mexico, all they had to hunt was rab um, jackrabbits, rodents, squirrels. Wow. But when you get up in the northern areas, now they're hunting all the big animals, so that's where you find the biggest wolves, obviously, because they're hunting the biggest prey. What is the lifespan average? In the wild, it's only five to seven years. Oh, my. In captivity, it's 12 to 14, and that is entirely because of the veterinary care. Okay. They do get veterinary, um, veterinary care, very strict program. They also get um, uh, preventative vaccinations and rabies vaccines. And What's she doing? Just getting a workout for herself? Yeah, 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 she's just showing off a little bit. So, uh, she's a nonconformist. She was taken out of the pack when she was very young because she wouldn't follow the rules. In the wild, she would be a lone wolf. Okay. She's just not going to follow the rules. And if you don't follow the rules of the pack, then you're a risk to the safety of the pack. So that term, lone wolf, 
But you're always here. That would be jelly. That really comes from. Yep. Yep. The other night I got my first after all these years. I heard the coyotes start out in the field, so I got my phone out. Of course, I videoed, but it was pitch black. But it was the coyotes howling and the wolves howling back. That's the territorial thing. Are the coyotes related to them? Yeah, they're wild cousins. Actually, we have in the Northeast now something called coy wolf because we wiped out the wolves in New England in 1637. Wow. So there have been no wolves in the Northeast for uh, a few hundred years. And if you lived in this town and owned property in this town in 1600, you were required by local law to tie four fish hooks together, put a little fur on the hooks, dip them into some warm fat, let that fat cool so you could form it into a ball, then hang them from the trees or bury them underground, and the wolves would come through and dig up or jump up for that ball of fat and end up with fish hooks in their bellies. That sounds so, so I mean, we, we were right in the beginning of eradicating the wolf right here in our own little town. Man is their only natural enemy. There is no animal that hunts the wolf other than human animal. Hey, listen. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Enjoy this, St. Thomas. This, this, this guy is made for studios only. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a skier. I get outside. <laughs> You saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own what I was there for You heard me saying a prayer for Someone I really could care for Blue Well, what do you think? Our hundredth birthday. Get yourself down to uh, Gordon's Greenhouse. Uh, not just for the holiday season or Valentine's Day. Anytime. And as you saw, Diane Tedford, an old friend of mine, she shops there frequently, okay? But think about it. One hundred years. Outlasting the Strand Theater, Captain Harry's, the Marguerite Restaurant, Quince Drugstore, all these great memories we have of vintage. And they're still rolling and for many years to come. Okay. Get down to Gordon's. Get down to Wolf Hall and learn a little bit about the history of the wolves, okay? But with that said and done, we wish you a happy new year, healthy, wise, okay? See you later.